welcome back to the channel so this is quite a long video it's the full lands end 2022 um, trial footage video uh, we're also going to have a look in a minute at the car because see it's just this is the car after the trial um, i'm going to show you the footage from the trial in a minute from the start um, we'll just run through the car now quickly before the video starts um, just so you can see how it's ended up after the event let's go okay so here it is um bit muddy still got all our crap in the car haven't emptied it out yet um we came away with one puncher um, which isn't too bad but not like a ripped apart one it was just a slow um but yeah i think the car performed really well it gripped really well um if you don't know about the suspension that changes that we've made to the car i'll put a link up here to the video of changing the car from torsion bars to air shots so you can go back through and have a little look at that and then jump back in and uh, carry on with the video so yeah so air shocks um nothing's bent Ugh, let's have a look. although i do admit that we have eight inches of travel now rather than the 12 that we started with but explain what happened there at the end of the video so stick around for that um because stuff happened so you join us at about half past nine at night um down in cornwall it is not, it's quite mild actually it's not too bad the weather um but so this is pretty much the best type of road that we're going to drive on the whole night um most of the roads on a trial if, if you've seen my previous video i'll put the link at the top of the page of um of the xmore trial just giving you the sort of big basics on how trials work i'm not going to go into too much detail um but they try and keep you away from like major a roads and well this is a major a road but literally for about three miles um they try and keep you away from a roads and motorways so we've traveled from um plusher and all the way up to Bridgewater um, without touching the M5 or most major roads, which is kind of miserable. Um, but this is coming through Taunton towards Bridgewater. And um, so, ta so Taunton, basically, there are so many cars um, and bikes entering that you can't really have one start venue. So they start you from different venues. We were down in Cornwall and there's two other venues, I think Sirencester and Popham with the other venues and then you all merge up to Bridgewater for like a time control where you wait and get scrutinized and then uh, you start from there one minute interval intervals so we are car number 267 uh, so we start 267 minutes behind or 266 minutes behind the first bike um, there were a fair amount of bikes so 173 bikes, 132 cars, and then you've got Class O, which is like, um, so you miss out some of the more damaging sections. There was 39 in there, and then there was 17 doing like an all tarmac like classic. Um, so the scrutineering, they're just going through and checking your, your lights, your fire extinguisher, whether you've got um, the right spill kit and all that sort of good stuff. Battery, make sure it's strapped down properly, all that fun stuff. So this type of road is pretty much how we drive from Bridgewater to Cornwall. Single track lanes. It's not so bad at night because you've got obviously headlights coming the other way, but during the day when you're down in Cornwall, it sucks because you've got holiday makers coming the other way and all sorts of stuff. It takes forever. So average speeds are incredibly low, but that's the whole idea. You get to see parts of the countryside that you don't often see and it's good fun.
This is a classic trials queue. So observe section one. Um, I've also put at the bottom there, so the what free words. So if you download the what free words app, um, that gives you a precise location of where each what free words is. So you can go and have a little look and see where you are, whether Google Earth has driven down here and got your pictures or not, I don't know, but you'll be able to see a satellite image at least. So every section you get to, you're gonna end up with in some sort of queue most of the time, um, whether that's because someone's taken too long or, they, or they've got stuck and had to reverse and come back down and it can add hours onto an event and it did in this case add hours onto the event. But it's all good, this is part of the fun. A lot of the sections have very, very long tracks after them that you've just got to drive down for sometimes 10, 15 minutes till you get back onto a road again. Um, so right here, this is the end of section one, and this is where we lost our torch, which is my favorite thing to say. Um, yeah, so we had two torches and we dropped one here. So someone somewhere has picked up a lovely torch of mine and they've got a free torch, so thanks for that. If you want to return it to me, feel free. Um, I would love to have it back. It, it's got a charger that's missing it. Section two, Beggar's Roost. Um, it's 100 year anniversary of the MCC using this as a, as a, as a trial hill. Um, 100 years is a long, long time. Just think of the machinery that's come up that hill. It must be insane. on a good show here as well so they're really really warm and welcoming in um, in the garage and in the village hall and this is the only section at night that had um, fairy lights which is awesome the road sections between the actual observed sections is probably the killer um, I can't remember what this one was 48 miles 48 miles is a long time driving on roads like this and single track roads it takes an eternity so that comes probably one of my favorite sections not due to the section itself because it was fairly easy compared to some of the other sections but just the lovely villages at the top selling cups of tea and cakes and just very very nice ladies Uh, it is an unknown amount of distance. 
Yes, why thank you. I'd love a tea. Uh, yeah. Three miles to Patrick Station. Good morning. Good morning. Ten miles to somewhere else. Cutliffe Lane was our first failure of the event. A um, couple of reasons why. So our pressure tyre pressure gauge um, was stuck on 5 psi. So when we went to let the tyres down, the old man started letting one down. I came and checked the pressure and it was 5 psi. And we were like, yeah, I'll do. Went around and checked the other side, 5 psi. Happy days, let's go. Turns out they were about 20 psi still. Um, so this is us on hard tyres trying to get up fairly slippery hill, so it didn't go well. So the next section is Hack Marsh and I forgot to turn the camera on for Hack Marsh but I can tell you that it was pretty rough, huge, great big rocks everywhere. I don't think I've ever seen a section quite like it. It was, um, it was a great section, we cleared it, um, but it was hell of a rough, really rough. So it's getting pretty warm at this point. Um, it's not normal to trial in sunny weather. Normally it's miserable, cold and wet. Um, so yeah, we're not really used to the, the heat. The car's not used to the heat, definitely not. What a fantastic view for a checkpoint. So the next section is Crackington and I've almost forgot to start the camera at the start of Crackington, um, but I'm glad I did because we failed Crackington. Um, and we failed because when we got there there wasn't a queue so we let the tyres down and then we just went straight up the hill and due to it being so hot the carb had got so hot and the fuel was just vaporising before it even did anything so we uh, spluttered to a stop not even near, nowhere near the restart at all just right at the bottom just splut 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 dead which is great
after this we made sure that um, if we were like one or two in the queue we always pulled over and stopped for 10-15 minutes just to let things cool down um, let the fuel cool down as much as we could and after that we didn't have any more problems that was it it's not an issue we've had before it's the first time we've ever had it happen so we'll try and solve it Bit of here, flat tire. What about now? So we changed um, both rear tires to give us um, some fresh ones on the back. So we've got one puncture and one worn, but still got air in. So we're running on two fresh tires on the back now. There are lots of these um, like holding controls and the idea of them is that they don't want 20, 30 cars turning up to a section entrance and like blocking up the roads and that sort of thing. So they hold you back and they radio through and send a few at a time just so there's not major hold ups everywhere. So this is the famous Blue Hills. Um, I think this is the first time we've actually driven down this first part of the road and there hasn't been any traffic, um, which is unusual, but it was lovely. Like a camera on the front of the car for both blue wheels so this is blue wheels one again but from the front <laughs> 
arrived at just the wrong time at Blue Hills 2. You could not see anything at all. Completely blind going up the hill. So that was it, that's all the sections done and it's about an hour drive then to the uh, finished time control. Again, that's another part of uh, the reliability side of it. You've got to do all these sections off-road and then drive for an hour on road. Um, long or short though, 22 hours almost. 343 miles if you include from the start down in Cornwall. What fantastic weather to finish off an event though. So there we go, that was our event. Um, car performed really well, gripped really, really well. I don't think it's ever gripped that well before. Um, so it's definitely air shocks actually worked. Nothing bent, nothing broke during the event. Um, got to take my hat off to the organizers and the marshals. Those dudes have stood out there from, for like eight, nine hours, just at a section watching people go past and, standing there and writing stuff down, observing properly, and a lot of them are doing it for nothing, which is incredible. Just so, if you were there doing that, thank you very, very much. It was an honor to come through and take part in an event that you guys are helping to run. Um, so yeah, it didn't all go super, super smooth. Um, obviously the rear of the car is a lot lower than it started. Um, as we were driving back about 20 minutes into the drive back um, we pulled over to put warm gear back on because it was starting to get dark um, and I noticed that there was just smoke pouring out from under the bottom of the car um, so we had a little look underneath and turns out that a CV was basically just a big pile of meltiness um, I'll, I'll turn the lights on and I'll take you under and uh, show you the culprit not that you can see much, but that there was literally smoke pouring out of it. I think there's paint peeling off of it, that's how hot it got. Um, so, as for the reason why the suspension was dropped, so what I did when we were there, so I let, um, I let gas out of the two rams so that rather than the drive shaft pointing down, it was more straight so that we could hopefully try and get home on it. 
Um, and it didn't work. Like maybe five minutes later of driving, it was going no, 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 knocking like a knocking like you wouldn't believe. So um, yeah, we pulled over and uh, and got it recovered home. We we chose where to break down basically. It was break down somewhere in the middle of nowhere at night, or break down at McDonald's and have coffee and warm food. And uh, yeah, so we pulled over at McDonald's and had some coffee, some food, and waited an hour for someone to come pick us up and got it back. It still runs and that, it's just, we need to sort out the CV. Um, to be fair, we've never actually touched the CVs. They're the original CVs. So they could have done 200,000 miles in a beetle when it's past life before it got turned into this. And yeah, so we've never touched them, never taken them apart. Um, obviously now we need to start doing that and start carrying them as, as backups just so we can get home. So yeah, that's why we're running low. Um, because I had to let some of the air out, to tr the gas out the shocks to try and get it to sit a bit lower. But it worked really well. Um, obviously the, we need to sort this out and try and get the heat away from the carb, try and sort any problems like that out with the fuel limb. And it was a hot day, so we're gonna install a second um, spow fan onto the rad. Um, the fan worked amazingly when it's not on it's like the temperature just goes sky high but as soon as you turn that fan on it pumps the heat out which is great um so yeah that's um i think that's all we want to do we want to put panniers on it as well so i had like my dry sack it's at home now but like here and obviously that blocks the airflow coming through um so we're going to get like panniers and have them mounted on the side here and like maybe do like an alley defender to stop the crap from hitting it from the front so we're gonna do that on either side just to um just to put our stuff in basically. If you obviously wear like a coat and hat and gloves and you've got nowhere to store it. So when it gets warm, you take it all off and you end up with it floating around everywhere. So if we've got somewhere to put it, then uh, that makes a bit more sense. But yeah, um, if you've stuck through to the end, thanks very much. Um, that was our Land's End trial. See you later guys.